Right, we're gonna get uh, started. I know you guys are, we can talk for days about certain uh, escrows and all that, but we'll try to leave that, or I could talk to Christine or whoever it is, uh, one on one. That's definitely something that you definitely want to discuss with your broker, you know, whatever the case is. Luckily for you, I'm here. <laughs> So, but yeah, so there's always different things that pop up and that's the, that's the beauty of, uh, that's not necessarily the beauty, but the, the reason you want to be part of meetings like these, uh, weekly meetings uh, and communicate, like Christine does a great job communicating with me what's, what's going on. Cause uh, that's, you know, stuff like that. I've been through it or, you know, more familiar with it. I can tell you what you need to do. If not, I'll talk to Carligo or I'll talk to one of my attorneys or I'll talk to somebody that may know the information to, to get it remedied. Right, and then day it is what it is, you know. Sometimes if you can't resolve it through, you know, buyer seller, you have to go through mediation. If not, then you have to take it to small claims or take it to the other court, right? But yeah, so so that said, like I said, if you if you guys have questions as far as an escrows, I know, or struggling through getting an escrow, that's why it's important to be part of these calls, and that's how we help each other grow and and build our business. That's. Each and every one here, I'm assuming, you know, that's why you guys are here is you want to help not, not only with your business, but you want to help other people as well grow their business and uh, succeed, right? So that's why it's important to be part of these groups. That's why I created this boiler room uh, 90 days ago to try to, you know, help you guys really, not necessarily me give you guys uh, accountability, but for the most part, your other agents in the brokerage uh, hold you accountable, right? Because now guess what? Some of the people that are not on these calls no more, uh, that's their character and now we look at them differently right it is what it is right so so that's it that's why it's important you know like to come to the meetings as much as you can be part of these calls as much as you can any trainings that I offer any other trainings that you know I recommend definitely try to be part of those as well okay because uh, that's and that's what we we'll talked about today it's it's all about habits right it's also uh, and what we'll talk about today is change and habits which I think is very important especially right now as we move forward to uh, the last week of this call and then uh, moving forward to what's uh, about to happen, uh, you know, not only in real estate, but what I have planned for my brokerage here in uh, AVM Real Estate Services. All right, so so real quick, yesterday we started, uh, I started a little bit about uh, behavior, uh, not uh, change, which is basically your behavior and as well as habits, which is what we're gonna talk about real quick today and then uh, follow that up, uh, finish that up next week. When we talk about habits and change, it's an ongoing process, so it's not just gonna be a, uh, an hour or 30 minutes or one day thing. I'm always gonna focus on that. But I think that's one of the trainings I'm really gonna be focused on with, with you guys, whether you're new seasoned or new agent like Marissa or upcoming agents like Travis or Avaro. Uh, it's your habits and uh, that's gonna be important, right? And I think we discussed this when we first started in May. I think it was in May when we started this boiler room. I knew a lot of people won't make it to the end, right? It is what it is, right? It's because it's their habits. This is a habit that you have to change, right? If you are accustomed to doing something on a, what's today? Wednesday, 10 o'clock, you have to change what you're doing Wednesday to be able to commit to this for 100 days. That's why I always do 100 days to, you know, it will be 100 days to 100K or 100 days to lose weight, whatever it is. I will say 100 days because, see my phone's ringing again. Because that's going to separate those who are committed, right? I'm not doing four or six weeks. Yeah, four to six weeks can create a habit. You do 100 days, that habit becomes a lifestyle. There's a difference. That's why I do it longer. Anybody can do for four weeks, six weeks. Okay, great. I have a habit now. I'm a smoker now. Whatever it is, I'm a alcoholic. But now, as you go longer to 100 days, it becomes your lifestyle, okay? So that's something we're going to be talking about today is with change and uh, habits. It's... First of all, you gotta want to change, right? Change your lifestyle, right? Being on a Zoom call on a Wednesday morning, it's a lifestyle change, let's be real, right? You have family, you have things you do, you have activities that we're doing before, or maybe you slept in late, so now you gotta wake up early to be on a Zoom call, right? But it's a habit, right? So that's what we're gonna talk about today is, is habit, but more important before that, we're even talk, we're talking about change, right? It's a behavioral change that's necessary to form the right habits. So this is gonna be very important. And like I said, we're gonna go more detail next week and moving forward, but I just wanna kinda of give you guys uh, an idea of what we need to do to really form the right habits. All right, anybody got any questions from yesterday, by the way? I didn't really go too much detail, but uh, you know, I just wanna kinda of give you guys an overview yesterday, what we're gonna be talking about today. All right, 
So with that said, when we started this 90 days ago, I mean, a lot of people set goals, right? Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm doing, I'm doing that by 100 days, right? And I, I told everybody up front, I have no expectations. The only expectations I have is like expectations that you give to me, right? So when you give that expectations, you got to ask yourself, are you going to, you set that goal, what are you going to do to achieve that goal, right? Because at the end of the day, if you're not, let's say, let's say three was your goal, right? If you haven't done three day, three escrows in 100 days, you have to form different habits. You have to change your activities, right? Right, you can't just, now, if you're already doing three, you have you don't really have to change anything, right? But if somebody said, I want to do uh, 20 deals this year, and you're only accustomed to doing six and eight a year, well, there has to be change, right? Your habits have to change, right? And that's very important. A lot of people don't change. Like a lot of people oh, can't even change to, to come to a meeting every week. Can't even change to commit to being on a, a weekly Zoom call every Wednesday morning, right? It's You have to change your behavior, right? To form a habit. So today I'm gonna to talk about a thing I mentioned yesterday is the three types of change. So these are three layers of behavioral change, right? You have to change your uh, your behavior, all right? There's a three types of behavior. Just like I said yesterday, somebody says, I'm trying to quit smoking versus somebody say, I no longer smoke. There's two different types, right? One is they're trying to change the process and one or change their outcome. Another one is they've already changed their identity, right? So that's, uh, there's a big difference in that. A lot of people struggle, right? Because they can't change their identity, right? Or some people are just focused on the outcome. Well, I'm trying to lose 20 pounds in 90 days, right? But you guys understand your identity, your process, your habits are gonna change, have to change to be able to get the outcome. That's why a lot of people set goals and never achieve them, right? It's just a waste of time to be honest, setting goals. It's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do 10 goals. 10 uh, escrows, why don't they get to that goal, right? Because they're not willing to change their habits, right? Their behavior, right? That's what it comes down to. If you want to make 100,000 or 200,000, it doesn't even matter what the number is. Your behavior has to change. If it doesn't, you're not going to get that. I don't care what it is. Somebody says, I want to lose 20 pounds. Your behavior has to change, right? Just like me right now, I'm going through um, a personal trainer right now, right? I'm trying to, by my next birthday in February, get to a certain level as far as body fat. I know you guys already, I said this before, I know you guys know I'm already think I'm like 5% body fat, but you know, in reality, I'm not a 5% body fat, right? So my, my behavior has to change, right? And this is what we'll talk about later. It's I'm forming the habits, the right habits. Because guess what? That's the only reason I hired a personal trainer, right? which Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I have a personal trainer that I've committed to, say, because I'm paying, that I'm gonna see my personal trainer. If I didn't have that, I could just, oh, you know, I don't need to come work out today. I will do it tomorrow. My habits are not gonna change. So I forced myself, because I want a certain outcome, to change that. At the same time, you know, it's the process too, and that's what we're gonna talk about, is with change, is your process has to change to make 100,000. Or if you wanna eat healthy, right? The way you eat has to change, right? Somebody says, hey, you know, I want to lose 20 pounds versus somebody, you know, I want to be healthy. Same thing. What has to change? The process, right? I have to go to gym three times a week, my personal trainer. I have to, you know, wake up. Your habits have to change now. Does that make sense? Same thing with real estate, right? Same thing with any areas of our life. Your behavior your, has to change to be able to get the outcome that you desire, right? And last layer is your identity. This is very important, right? Like, go back to the smoking. Somebody says, I'm trying to quit smoking versus somebody, I'm not, I don't smoke anymore. There's a difference between their identity, right? And that's, I think, I'll really focus more on today is really is identifying who you are, right? Because a lot of times, who we are right now does not necessarily need to be who we're going to be tomorrow, a year from now five years from now, we change, our identity changes, right? Even for me, right? And that's the hardest part for seasoned agents, uh, people doing this in business, even for newer agents like Marissa or Travis and any other upcoming agents, it's hard to change their identity, right? And at the same time, it's hard for you, you have to change your identity 
to your social media, to your followers, to your friends, to your family, all right? I'm gonna pick up Marissa, perfect example. Marissa is not a, wasn't an agent before, right? She has, now she has to change her identity. They didn't look at her as an agent. Now her identity has to change to match that, right? So guess what? Her behavior has to change. And guess what? Her habits has to change as well. And that's what we'll talk about as far as habits. So you guys have established your identity, who you are, right? But your identity has to change, right? Because a lot of times the identity, who we are today, is not really who we think we are. It's what people project or tell us who we are. All right? I'm going to pick up myself. People used to tell me, man, you're so handsome. You're so good looking, man. Like, And then I, I felt like I didn't have to work hard anymore, right? I know maybe some of you guys, females, uh, even Travis, you know, you have that big, you feel like you're just, you know, a good looking person. Not, that you're really more than that, right? And you're typecast to that person, right? Or somebody may say, you're stupid. You're not smart enough, right? I'll be honest, I, I tell this story, I don't know if I told you guys the story. Years ago when I first started, when I first uh, got to school, when I was re a, a real toddler, right? People said I was stupid. People thought I was stupid. Because I was quiet, I was shy, I was, I was an immigrant, moved to a new country. I'm still learning how to speak Tagalog, which is a Filipino dialect, right? And people are trying to talk to me in English. And I lived in LA. Guess who my neighbors were? Hispanic, right? And then some of the kids on the street were talking Ebonics, right? Yo, 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 check it out, man. What up? You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that was what it was before, but you know what I'm saying? So I got confused. So it was easier for me to just be quiet and be shy. I was shy. And then even when I try to talk, and some of you guys may have this experience before in the past, I'll try to talk. I might not pronounce, even like right now, I might not pronounce certain words or I stutter still. People will make fun of you, right? Because you pronounce something wrong. And then guess what? It forms a habit for you, right? Oh, I shouldn't talk because people are gonna make fun of me, right? Even for me, when growing up, I was young, I didn't want to raise my hand and talk because at my past experience, my behavior was formed because, oh, you shouldn't talk. Or if you say something, you might be wrong, all right? And these are the habits that has been formed to our lives. And it's being formed every day. The people you talk to, the people, the books you read, right? All that is forming your, your habits right now. And it's hard to change unless you're willing and that can identify what you're doing is not working. You need to do something different, right? Definition of sanity. Doing the thing, same thing over and over and expecting different results. The problem with a lot of agents, I'm not going to pick on anyone here. I'm just saying with agents or people in sales is we want change. We want different results, but we're not willing to put forth effort, to change our habits, to change our behavior, right? So that's gonna be the challenge. That's why right now I move forward, moving forward with, even with these boiler rooms, I've seen, I've done these calls before, I've, I've coached people, until somebody's willing to change their habits, their behavior, they're not gonna get the results, right? I'm not gonna go, hey, what, what was your goal? You guys know what your goals are. You know what, he's right. I didn't do the activities. I was inconsistent. I didn't go to the meetings. I didn't reach out to Tony, right? I didn't ask for assistance. Whatever the case is, you guys, we can track it back, right? Because the bottom line, the reason you're not gonna get your outcome, which a lot of people based on the goals are, is because in between that, you didn't change anything. Let's be real. You didn't change anything. If you don't get the outcome, it's because you didn't change and you didn't form the right habits through the process, okay? Change. Change is good, right? As long as, you know, it's the right behavioral change. Does that make sense? So I want to make sure you guys understand that you got to figure out the three different layers, right? If it's just based on outcome. A lot of people, to be honest with you guys, because they try to change just based on outcome, they're not going to succeed. That's why I always tell you guys from day one, right? I don't focus on the results, which is the outcome. I focus on the activities, which is basically your process. And at the same time, the main thing I focus on too, as you guys know, is your mindset. If it wasn't working, you don't need it. And that's the hardest part of change, right? And that was hard from being like what you see right now, CEO. I used to do mortgages, had my own mortgage office. I was successful at the same time, you know, all that to be now like, I'm gonna stay at home dad, right? My identity changed. And trust me, that was the hardest part because I was staying at home dad and I still was trying to act like a CEO with my wife. 
Maybe that's why it didn't work out. Thanks for reminding me, guys. Dang. I just see, there you go. I'm gonna pay $1,000 for a therapist for that. I just found out what the real reason is. Okay, so, <laughs> thank you. So, uh, <laughs> that's for my YouTube guys. Make sure to follow YouTube. Okay, so, <laughs> my point is, your identity of who we are today doesn't necessarily be mean that's who you are tomorrow, all right? If I wanna make 100,000 or 200,000, whatever the case is, I'm gonna be a broker, you have to change. Like if I'm gonna be a broker or CEO and looked at as a CEO, I gotta act like a CEO, right? My identity has, this, you know, has to change differently, right? And it doesn't happen all of a sudden, right? Like all of a sudden I'm wearing suits. They're like, wait a minute, who the heck is this guy, right? It's gotta be gradually. And that's why I would say, especially for the newer agent like Travis, start forming that, trying to figure out who you're identity and start forming that slowly and gradually. So they're like, this guy is not authentic. That girl's not authentic. She's fake, right? Because you don't want to also come across fake, right? And that's going to be very important as you progress and go through that and form and change, more important change, but start forming new habits, okay? Does that make sense? Uh, the book I'm reading right now, Atomic Habits, actually kind of breaks it down real real nicely. So for those who want to read the book, Atomic Habits, I would recommend it. Most of these I already follow, you know, but I want to teach you guys right now how this, how he explains the science of how habits work. Number one, Q, C-U-E, right? You guys know what the Q is, the trigger, right? You wake up in the morning, that's a Q, that's a trigger. What are you going to do, right? Somebody brings you uh, cake pops, that's a Q, that's a trigger. Oop. Good habits or bad habits, right? Number two, craving, right? It's your craving. Just like food, real simple food, like smoking, right? Now you get the craving. Oh, I want to smoke. You go out to a bar. What do you do? You go out to the winery. But you're, you're, you're trying to be sober. What's the cue? Well, it's a cue. But you get the craving. Oh, well, what's one wine, right? What's that going to do, right? Number three. Response. How do you respond to that? Sure. Give me a cigarette. There. You got a light? Keep those shots coming, right? It's response. Right? It's a cue. Craving. Response. And then last is reward. Which is basically the result, the outcome. Does that make sense? So I'm going to keep it simple. If, if, if you're trying to quit smoking because you know it's healthy, not healthy for you, because your blood pressure is too high, whatever the case is, that's a cue. You're going to get, this is where the good habits and bad habits form, right? But before that, you have to identify and understand their habits. And this is what we'll talk about later on is understanding. That's a problem. You're trying to quit smoking. That's why most people don't quit smoking, right? Because they get that craving and they respond with a bad habit, right? Great. What's one cigarette? Two packs later, <laughs> oh well. You start forming bad habits, right? Because that's the trigger, that's the cue. You're put in a situation like here or there. How do you respond to that, right? And that's very important. And that's why it's important. And then the last is the reward. What's the reward by making those calls every day? What's the reward for following up with those calls every day? As long as you understand that, all right? So this is how habits are formed, good and bad, right? How you, and the habits that you have right now, good or bad, has made the person who you are today. I can go back to who you are today based on the habits that you have formed throughout your life. That's it, right? It's very simple, right? Like I always said, that's where association, you know, is very big, right? The books you read, like I said, who you are today is based on the books you read and who you hang out with. That's it. Hey, I'll, I'll be honest. I have a lot of bad habits. I'll tell you right now, I'm probably the one of the worst. I, I, I'm i self-aware. I'm not, I'm, I'm a terrible realtor, right? I'm a terrible broker, to be honest with you. There's a lot of stuff I don't do, but I'm self-aware of that. But at the same time, because I'm aware of this, I can still be great at it. Does that make sense? But at the same time, once the difference between me and a lot of other agents is I'm self-aware of that. I'm self-aware so that when the cue happens, right, which is the trigger, Tony, you have no escrows. No, you're not drinking tonight. 
Tony, your broker's license is due in October. You're not partying, you're getting this done. Right, it's a cute, it's a habit. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to be more accountable, how to be, be able to do things on your own, okay? So that you can not rely on Tony Rosa, not rely on Tony Mendoza, not even rely on AVM. I'll be honest, I want to get to the point that all you guys do your own thing. Whether it be opening your own brokerage or being a sales trainer, it may not even be in the industry of real estate. Do what you love, right? That's what I want. Turn those bad habits into good habits. It's real simple, but like everything I said, it's easy to do and easy not to do. That's why good habits are formed and bad habits are formed. It's real simple. Bad, honestly, bad habits are easy to overcome, but you gotta first recognize it's a bad habit, right? And that's a problem right now, and that's with society, with social media. A lot of the bad habits are being glamorized as a good habit. If you focus on yourself right now and self-improve and not worry about all this easy way up, that's where your, your self-aware comes in, right? And we'll talk about the four laws, how to change that. You gotta make it obvious. Gotta, oh, the right law is right now, we're doing in our consciously or unconsciously, right? Like you, you don't even you think about it. We're a creature of habits, right? We, we wake up the same time, we sleep around the same time, we, fought, we do the same route as far as going to work, to school, whatever the case is, right? We have kids, so we start forming habits. We become zombies, right? And that's what happens. And then we become comfortable and we're afraid of change, right? I think the biggest problem right now, especially, uh, is the GPS, right? Mm -hmm. We rely on technology. Technology has really, it's helped us and also hurt us at the same time, right? Because right now I'm like, I just, I just rely on GPS now. Even going home, I know how to get home. I still just put in GPS. And I saw, uh, it's a bad habit. It's like, I know how to get home. Like right now we were, uh, I was showing in Marietta. I know how to get to the office, but I still have to plug in or have Marissa plug in her phone, right? We're a creature of habits. We rely on technology, we rely on social media, we rely on our broker to give us leads, right? So that's what I'm saying, you're forming bad habits. That's why even me, I'm reluctant sometimes to give you guys leads because that's forming bad habits as well. Because now you're relying on me. Tony, where's my leads? That's why I'm still gonna be focused on training. Whether I'm giving you leads, especially more for the lead team, if I'm giving them leads at the same time, I'm teaching them how to generate that lead. All right, like I share with you guys how I got my listing, how I got a new buyer, right? I share with you guys the stories. That's called a cue a trigger that maybe you should figure out how do I do that, right? So that's why it's important. It's easy to, to recognize smoking, alcohol, or you know stuff like that, waking up in the morning. It's easy. But not recognize certain triggers is the problem with a lot of people, right? They wanna blame somebody else instead of understand the cues, the triggers, the cravings, right? How they responded to that. And guess what? What was the reward? or I'll come, right? Phone's blowing up. See right now, phone's blowing up. Hello, right? I, I automatically, you know, I have a habit that's gonna pick up the phone. Simple set of rules we can use to build better habits. Number one, make it obvious, right? You gotta make it obvious. You gotta recognize that that's a bad habit or this is a good habit. You gotta make it obvious. Number two, make it attractive, right? Number three, Make it easy. And number four, make it satisfying. We'll go over that more next week, but those are the four set of rules we can use to build better habits. We gotta make it obvious. We gotta make it attractive. We gotta make it easy. Excuse me. And last is we gotta make it satisfying. It's gotta be easy. It's hard to change habits if it's hard. So you gotta make it easy. Just like right now, Marissa wants to change her image or identity on social media. We're gonna try to make it easy. Right? It's gonna be a slow progression, slow process, right? To get there. And then you gotta make it attractive, but more importantly, you gotta make it obvious, right? That this is the f new habits I'm forming and I'm gonna work to get that. I'm to the point in my life right now, it is what it is. Oh, I don't care. Not that I don't care, but it is what it is. I can't control that. I can't control Lisa or Mary Chris or Marissa or Travis or Zoom user or Billy from doing the activities, right? You have to do it. End of the day, it's on you. You gotta be willing to make the change. You gotta be willing to form those habits. Change those bad habits into good habits. End of the day, it's on you, right? To make a decision that, okay, what I was doing before is not working, right? 
But if you don't hold yourself accountable, it's not obvious to you, then you're just going to, hey, I'm going to live a life. Hey, I don't know why I'm broke. You know why you're broke. You damn well know why you're broke, right? Look at the people you're hanging out with. You probably heard this quote before. Study your habits for it becomes your character, right? Develop your character for it what? Becomes your lifestyle. Becomes your destiny. Destiny. Right? So that's why it's important to read. More important to understand and study those habits that you have right now. Good and bad. The problem is we only study the good habits, right? We don't want to admit the bad habits we are. So if you guys want to be serious about growing your business or being more person, you know, improving your personal development, come to me. I'll tell you what your habits are. Because I follow you guys all on Instagram and TikTok Facebook. or Facebook, more importantly, right? The boiler room was just a boiler room. I'll be honest. The boiler room was a test, guys. The boiler room was a test. It was a test of your emergency broadcast system, guys. Right? I was going to test to see who would make it to the end. Who would be committed, who would be dedicated, who would put the effort. Right? See, Mary Chris understands the game. She's going to take advantage of me. I tell people to take advantage of me. Business-wise, Mary Chris, all right? Don't try to get me drunk. Okay? All right? <laughs> it's being recorded, by the way. It's on YouTube. We got to follow. Okay. We got to that later. Okay, so... I want you guys to understand, right? This is everything's a test. As a broker, I have to test people. But at the same time, I know if I want to reach my ultimate goal, I can't be doing what I'm doing, right? Definition of sanity. If a year from now, guys, I'm sitting down with the same people, same guys as you guys right now, and talking about the same thing, I failed. Right? I failed. And I'll be honest, I can admit that. And like I say all the time, I don't like to fail. All right? 